let's go ahead and right click and choose auto retopo. The main parameter you want to be concerned with is the estimated poly count. You can always use the default parameters here, but the poly count is very important. If you try to go too low, you may get a pretty nasty result. And that's just because 3D code doesn't have enough polygons to complete the process. So try to go a bit above what you're aiming for. If it's excessive, you can always make a second attempt with a lower amount, or you can use the delete edges tool holding down the control key to delete entire loops very quickly. So let me go with a 15,000. And I'll hit OK. Once you click OK, 3D Coat's going to go through two different steps in the wizard. The first one is asking whether or not you want to paint select areas where you think you need additional polygonal density. For example, if you have some protruding screws or bolts or very small objects, you may want to paint select those areas so that 3D Coat can add a higher degree of polygonal density to capture those details if you want them captured. Sometimes you just want normal maps to represent those details and not necessarily geometry. Let's click Next. At this stage, you can create stroke guides. Once you create some, 3D Coat will remember them each successive attempt you may make. To clear them, you would click Clear. In this case, I'll leave them intact. Uh, oftentimes, though, 3D Coat will do a very good job without the need for any additional help from the user. So it's a good idea, in many cases, to go ahead and let 3D Coat try to do it on its own. And then, if you find that it's not satisfactory, then the first thing you would want to do is go back and apply some stroke guides as hints. A couple rules to keep in mind about using stroke guides. Don't use too many, because neither you or I like to be micromanaged, and the algorithm is exactly the same way. It doesn't like too many instructions. Let it do what it needs to do, but you can give it some hints. The second thing to keep in mind is don't use intersecting lines. Don't cross over other lines. When you use the strokes tool for manual retopology, you do need to use it that way, but it's an entirely different purpose. So for auto retopo, don't cross over other lines. The other thing I want to mention is if you have a symmetrical object, make sure to turn symmetry on before you start the auto retopo process. Following those rules will help quite a bit. The other thing I should mention is when you create these stroke guides, you have a spline points density parameter here. The default value is 100. The smaller the object is, the higher value you're going to need. The larger it is, the smaller the value you're going to need. Okay, so I just gave it some hints. That's it. Let me create another one here. You can brush. And just some quick hints here. You can create a slice loop by lining up your object and starting outside one end and ending outside on the other. And 3D Coat will create a loop that goes all the way around. So I'll undo that. The other thing you can do is click on any one of these points. When it's highlighted, you can hit the delete key to remove just that line. You can also control click on a point to separate a line. You can also control click on the ends of a spline or a stroke to continue building off of it. Now, as you're brushing, if you don't have a steady hand, you can use steady stroke, but I would highly recommend unchecking that once you are done because it can interfere with other tools. Now, when you create these, also make sure you have enough spline points that it's able to stick to the surface of any contours you may have. If you don't have enough points, parts of that stroke may dip beneath the surface and you may not get a proper result. That applies with auto retopo as well as uh, the strokes tool when you're working manually. Also, if you're using symmetry, make sure your mirror snapping is above zero. It used to be default at zero, but I think Andrew has since changed that. But it's a good idea to stay above maybe 20 or 30 percent so that when it generates a mesh, those vertices at the symmetry line get welded. Otherwise, they won't and you'll have some cleanup to do. All right. So I think that's going to cover it for all the stroke guides. Let's click Next. And there we go. It did another version prior to me recording this, so it can be hit and miss sometimes. There's nothing wrong with deleting this and trying to make another attempt. Let me go ahead and delete this one, and I'll make another attempt.
You can drag a point over another end of a spline to connect them. I should mention whenever you use this that if you see a green stroke for a slice loop like this, that probably means it's not yet connected. The orange lets you know that it's fully connected all the way across. The green typically means it's an open-ended spline, it's not a loop. Let me make one more loop here. Let's go ahead and control click there, select a node, delete. I'll make one more. All right, let's give it another try. We can right click on the layer, auto retapo. You'll notice you have a VoxTree layer panel in this workspace as well, so that you can access objects in the sculpt room. Okay, we'll stick with the same amount. Maybe, maybe increase this level just a little bit and see if we get a slightly better result. I'll click Next. I also want to mention one last thing here, and that is when you're using the Strokes tool, whether as a manual retopology tool or in conjunction with the auto retopology tool, you can use these shapes actually to create. Let me go ahead and do that now. I'll use a square. You can actually use this to create a stroke. So let me undo. That's it. Next. I would also highly recommend that if you have a character or a creature, it may be a good idea to basically split or hide certain parts. For example, a character, you might hide the body while you auto retopologize the head and then go back and hide the head while you run a second process on the body. And then you can always weld the points together afterwards. And that way you're able to, to simplify things because there's a lot of complexity just in the head region alone. Okay, so it looks like we got a fairly decent result. There are some areas that we may want to clean up. I can go ahead and quickly show you how you might go about doing cleanup of an area like this. And it's largely because these surfaces are very close together. Let's turn auto snap off when we want to relax a certain area. I'm going to go to the select tool. Let's use maybe a polygonal lasso. Let's go to the bottom and choose relax. And click it as many times as we need to bring it back to the surface. I can escape to drop that selection, go to the brush tool, hold down the shift key, and now I'm able to smooth. Let's check auto snap now because we want to snap to the surface while we're smoothing. And so that's how you can clean up little small issues that you might encounter from time to time when using this tool. Okay, so that's a look at using the auto retopo feature in 3D Coat. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.